Um, isn't it interesting the contrast between Joe Biden, the uh, uh, complete politician, and Donald Trump, the complete lying little pissant, a uh, grifter, nobody. Biden going to Israel today to try to do something to stop the madness. Um, whether he will be successful or not is pretty much a foregone conclusion, but at least he's making the effort. Last week, I think it was last week, his meeting with striking union members in Detroit. Um, his constant efforts, this old man, trying to do the best for us, the people of America. Well, these Republic, Republican so-called, these Christian demonic scum in the U.S. House of Representatives do nothing but fight each other, tear at each other, to see who is going to be the gang leader that gets the blessing from Donald Jesus Trump. I mean, if the American people... I'm not talking about you, and I'm not talking about me. The American people refuse to see the difference between this old man, Joe Biden, who just seems to keep on succeeding, and this filthy, grifting son of a bitch, Donald Trump, who just wants to be president to stay out of jail because he is a criminal. Whoever can't see the difference between the two deserves the kind of presidency that uh, may come his or her way. Although, then the rest of us will suffer too, right? Good God. Uh, so Biden decided to go to Tel Aviv today and to Amman, Jordan tomorrow. Um, it is a symbolic trip that once again is meant to show full U.S. support for Israel. But supposedly Biden's trip, and I hope this is the case, supposedly another reason is to press for humanitarian aid for the Palestinians who live in Gaza. And he's going to also be asking for safe passage for American citizens out of this horrible abattoir that is Israel-Palestine right now, which uh, uh, leaves me with a very bitter taste in my mouth because, yes, I expect the American citizens to, to be rescued, you might say, by the president. But what about the Gazan citizens? What about the citizens of the kibbutzes? What about everybody? The trip by Biden is right in the middle of Israel's preparations to launch this promised ground assault into Gaza. And even though it seems to be delayed after delayed after delayed, you know it's going to happen. You know Netanyahu is going to order this. And you also know this, if you have had any awareness of the situation in Israel, Palestine, for the past 75 years, you know this one truth, the one truth that will come out of this. It's multifaceted, but it's one truth. There will be thousands of murdered, there will be destruction that will make Gaza look as though it's a city out of Germany after World War II. It will do nothing to continue or to establish the real safety of Israeli Jews. It will do nothing to establish a decent livelihood and real safety for Palestinian Muslims and Christians. We know, we know from 75 years' experience, we know what this operation is going to accomplish. Piles of corpses of men, women, children, and babies, blood-soaked earth once again, demolished buildings, and beyond that, well, there's one other thing that this is going to accomplish, more hatred more resentment, 
more promises of revenge in a part of the world that hasn't it seen enough? Hasn't it seen enough? <sighs> the trip was announced by the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, in Tel Aviv. After he met with this, this fascist son of a bitch, Netanyahu, for seven hours... And in brief remarks after that meeting, Blinken said the United States and Israel had agreed on aid to Gaza. What does that mean? What does that mean? Now, Biden is going to meet with uh, the Israeli dictator, wannabe Netanyahu, uh, when he gets there. And then in Jordan, in Amman, Jordan, Jordan, the capital of Jordan, Biden will meet with King Abdullah. Also at that meeting, the president of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who is another totalitarian, and Palestinian Authority president. Yeah, there is such a thing as the Palestinian Authority. That president, Mahmoud Abbas. All of these people are going to get together to talk about efforts to get humanitarian aid into Gaza. The... um Spokesman for the United States, what's his name, John Kirby, um, who is the National Security Council spokesman, John Kirby, who is a, seems to be, doesn't he, a very likable man. Um, he said, quote, we want to see assist, assistance get in through the Rafa gate and also for people to be able to get out. The Rafa gate being on the border between southern Gaza and Egypt that was promised to have been opened. It has not been. These are the kinds of things that happen in Israel-Palestine. These are the kinds of things that happen in the Middle East, no matter what the country is. This is it's a part of the world. It's a desert country. It's, it is part of the world where illusion, where distortion where imaginary things happen. I mean, it's the birthplace of three religions. Well, actually, more than that, if you consider the various subdivisions of Christianity and Judaism and Islam. Biden, of course, hopes that he'll get an update on hostages being held by Hamas. Since there is no representative of Hamas, obviously, going to attend this meeting in Jordan, I, I don't know if President Biden is going to get any kind of a number or any kind of a report. And whatever he does get, I, I wonder if it will be truth or just more bullshit out of the fog of this horror that's going on in that part of the world. U.S. officials have said that they believe at least a few Americans are still being held hostage by Hamas. And that's one of the reasons, of course, that Biden will be asking questions about these hostages. Now, the U.S. War Department has moved an aircraft carrier strike group into the region. This is a show of force, obviously. It's an attempt to deter any other country in the Middle East from trying to take advantage of this situation because there is well-thought-out concern based on 75 years of experience that this conflict could spread. This is something that Joe Biden and members of his administration do not want to happen. It's something I don't want to happen, something you don't want to happen. The only people in this country who want this to spread and ignite the entire region in the flames of hell are the Christian demons who are loose in this country. They want this. They want this destruction because to these crazy bastards, this will mean that Jesus Christ is very happy and his daddy, the Christian, uh, Jewish, Muslim God, 
is very happy to see the bloodshed and the slaughter and the guts on the road and the smashed bodies that this demonic God is so happy that he will send his son back to earth to save the Christians, the Jews and the Muslims. Oh, well, they'll just be burned in hell. Ask any Christian fundamentalist, and that's the answer you will get. So the only people in this country that by their own words are hoping this this turns into an unstoppable catastrophe of the Christian fundamentalist. How about that? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.